So today, guys, we're going to take a look at SBF's text conversation that he had with a journalist about, I think it was one of the New York Times journalists. I could be wrong on that, though. But this is part of the conversation that they were having while they were getting information on SBF. They just released this overnight. And let's take a look at it. So the journalist starts off with, so the ethics stuff, mostly a front. People will like you if you win and hate you if you lose. And that's how it all really works. And this is the question. SBF responds with, yeah, I mean, that's not all of it, but it's a lot. The worst quadrant is sketchy plus lose. The best is win plus questionable. Clean plus lose is bad, but not terrible. To be honest, I kind of agree with this. I think a lot of people will let a lot of sketchy shit pass if you're making the money because most people are greedy, myself included. Worst quadrant is sketchy plus lose because if you're sketchy and you lose, people will hate you. If you're winning, but you're kind of questionable, people love you. I mean, look at CZ now. They ask again, you said a lot of stuff about how you wanted to make regulations, just good ones. Was that pretty much just PR too? He responds with, there's no one really out there making sure good things happen and bad things don't. Usually there's only one toggle, do more or do less. Yeah, just PR. Fuck regulators. They make everything worse. They don't protect customers at all. I mean, honestly, I think that that's also true. You Usually regulations don't help the average person. They help corporations or they help big business. Most regulations kind of just either keep you out of where people make real money, if you're a regular individual like I am, or they don't really stop anything that would stop you from losing money. They just hopefully pay you back for the losses that you get. They continue, does seem like some kind of consumer protection would be good though. Like maybe regulators can't deliver it, but sure does look like consumers lose their shirts a bunch. He agrees on both. It would be good, but regulators regulators can't do it and you couldn't do it and CZ sure isn't doing it. So who? They can't actually distinguish between good and bad. Just do more business versus do less business and put up more moats versus put up fewer moats. See, this is exactly what I was talking about before. It feels like most regulation either keeps you out or puts up a barrier between you and where a lot of the money happen. Um, I'm not really sure what he means by do more business versus do less business. Maybe in terms of who can do business. Anyway, he continues, no one will, but you want to know the truth? No one's doing it in the rest of finance either. Or for that matter, other areas that are regulated. The FDA isn't helping. The giant crackdown on big tech has no point or goal or philosophy behind it. OFAC is slowly undermining US interests globally and is the single biggest threat to the US being a superpower. ESG has been perverted beyond recognition. I'm sort of putting together a picture where you don't believe anyone is doing anything for good reason. You don't believe the good guys are good. So why not make it big and then be the one who gets to decide what good is. And if you have to do sketchy stuff along the way, everyone else is doing it too. And plenty of them are worse. And people still like them as long as they win. Is that fair? What we are left with at the end of the day is only the rich can inest. Only they can make or lose money. Eh, there's some truth to it, but it's also true that I didn't want to do sketchy stuff. There are huge negative effects from it, and I didn't mean to. So I'm gonna call bullshit on this. I don't think that there's any way you get to that position and you accidentally do the things that you just did. Earlier in this, I wanna call it a tweet thread, but it's not, like in this conversation that they're having, he says some things that I agree with that doesn't change the fact that this man most likely, allegedly, and probably in my view, committed massive fraud, massive. Like he seems very relatable and intelligent here, and that's all well and good, but let's not forget that this man stole billions of dollars from people from regular people too. Not from like other corporations, but from people like me, people like you. Whether or not you had anything on FTX, I didn't have anything on FTX, you might not have either. They were still regular people that just got screwed. Anyway, he continues. Each individual decision seemed fine and I didn't realize how big their sum was until the end. This is their talk on ethics. I was just re-listening to that conversation we had this summer about whether you should do unethical shit or the greater good. What did I say? Sam bankman fried says. You were like, nah, don't do unethical shit. Like if you're running Philip Morris, no one's going to want to work with you on philanthropy. Heh. And there's risk of doing more harm than good. But even if you subtract that out, three, not worth it. Yeah. I was trying to figure out like if that was kind of the PR off the cuff answer, he responds with, man, all the dumb shit I said. It's not true. Not really. Yeah. I thought it might not be. He responds with, everyone goes around pretending that perception reflects reality. It doesn't. Some of this decade's greatest heroes will never be known, and some of its most beloved people are basically Shan, like himself. He does this a lot, where he'll, in an interview, describe himself as somebody else. He is one of the most beloved people, especially by the media. He was one of the most beloved people, let me correct. 
And he was a sham, 100%. He was a sham. So you kind of don't believe in like doing unethical shit as anything other than a judgment we bestow upon the losers. A month ago, CZ was a walking example of don't do unethical shit or your money is worthless. Now he's a hero. Is it because he's virtuous or because he had the bigger balance sheet and so he won? Well, I can see why you don't give that answer in interviews he goes hey so the ethic stuff mostly a front people will like you if you win and hate you if you lose and that's how it all really works yeah i mean that's not all of it but it's a lot the worst quadrant is sketchy plus lose the best is win plus questionable clean plus lose is bad but not terrible he said that earlier and he's right as i said earlier people will put up with sketchy stuff if you're making them money it's not that if you lose though he's framing it like he made a bad decision like investing in something and that's how he lost what happened was they stole people's money and got found out like let that sink in for a second they stole people's money and it all came crashing down he didn't invest poorly like it wasn't like oh people gave him this money to invest and he invested it poorly no he stole their money and he got found out he continues to say you were really good at talking about ethics especially for someone who kind of saw it all as a game with just winners and losers he goes yeah hey hey I had to be. It's what reputations are made of to some extent. I feel bad for those who get fucked by it, by this dumb game we woke Westerners play, where we say all the right shibboleths so everyone likes us. I'm not sure what this word means. You tweeted out some stuff like, we never invest your deposits. That was BS, right? It was factually accurate, huh? But like, their deposits were totally not there. Or do you just mean technically it was Alameda? FTX, correct. So FTX technically wasn't gambling with their money. FTX had just loaned their money to Alameda who had gambled with their money and lost it. And you didn't realize it was a big deal because you didn't realize how much money it was. And also thought Alameda had enough collateral to reasonably cover it. I get how you could have gotten away with it, but I guess that seems sketchy even if you get away with it. It was never the intention. Sometimes life creeps up on eight billion dollars, my guy. Eight billion dollars creeps up on you. Nine billion, ten billion with reports of as much as 50 billion in the hole creeps up on you this is the man everybody was saying is the next jp morgan chase whatever this makes absolutely no sense to me this whole thing just seems like nonsense whether or not you think alameda had enough collateral to cover what you lent them nobody knew you were lending the funds to alameda that's the shady part it's not whether or not you would have gotten away with it that makes it shady or is why people are upset it's because you told people that you weren't gambling with their money yet the other business that you own you just happened to loan money while they were gambling with your money and you want to step back and say hey i just didn't know that makes no sense man it makes no sense was the alameda thing when luna crashed the first time customer customer deposits got lent out that's what people are saying. Or was it more like the accounting was such that a lot of the stuff you were doing was implicitly backed by customer deposits? He says it's messy accounting plus margin exchange. Positions built up over time. Though in retrospect, Luna Crash was when a lot of it did. But messy accounting, I didn't realize full size of it until a few weeks ago. If you could do it all over again, would you just take more careful accounting? Never touch customer funds? Never go into crypto? He says more careful accounting plus off-board Alameda from FTX once FTX could live on its own. Are there people who told you to be more careful? Are there people you would have listened to? It's odd. I mean, maybe, but not really. And those who did, they did on other things, not that. It's odd. Everyone was so worried and concerned about dumb shit we definitely wouldn't do and that made no sense. But not about whether you were lending out customer funds. Seems like such an obvious thing for them to worry about. Yeah, but it's complicated. It wasn't quite lending them out. It was messier and more organic than that. Each step was in isolation, rational and reasonable. And then when I finally added it all up last week, it wasn't. Most exchanges did some variant of what we did, just not as big and without the run on the bank, at least recently and more intentionally. Everyone wants to be clever, and the clever thing to do is some complicated 3D chess involving customer orders or data or something like that, which makes no actual sense. So there was no point of like, let's lend customer deposits, just various financial instruments that ended up adding up to that you didn't even see they'd added up to that.
Yeah, like, oh, FTX doesn't have a bank account. I guess people can wire to Alameda to get money on FTX. Three years later, oh fuck, it looks like people wired eight billion to Alameda and oh God, we basically forgot about the stub account that corresponded to that and so it, it was never delivered to FTX. This is utter nonsense. Absolute nonsense nonsense. There is no way that you got to this level of compliance in the US because remember that there's FTX US. So you understand that there are things that you can and cannot do. FTX US, I'm sure, didn't have people depositing funds to Alameda first. They got a bank account. And in the process, you just left the other FTX for no reason. No, it was for a reason. It was so that you could continue to do this and live the lifestyle you wanted to live. Everything else just sounds like, like this, that whole explanation sounds like nonsense. He, can, he asked, do you know what's actually up with the money that got mysteriously moved out of FTX after bankruptcy? That's the other thing a lot of people are speculating about. He says, hack either ex-employee or malware on an ex-employee's computer a few hundred million. He says, what's next? What's your plan? He says, SBF says, I have two weeks to raise 8 billion. That's basically all that matters for the rest of my life. Well, I really hope that the depositors get their money back, but I gotta say, I have no idea how anyone could possibly pull that off from this starting point. Well, months ago, I was one of the world's greatest fundraisers. Now I'm the fallen wreckage of one, but there's a thing about being fallen. There are people who know what that's like and who want to do for someone else what nobody did for them. And that's it. Even at the end, everything he's saying sounds like utter bullshit. I, I can't even begin with this guy. Like so he it's like he sprinkled in just enough, just enough truth to make the bullshit taste a little bit less like bullshit. Like he comes off he comes across very, very logical and understandable and real here at some points where he talks about regulation and other things that I think most people in this space would agree with. But then he tries to like casually talk about losing $8 billion. Like it was just a series of rational steps that led, led to an irrational outcome when that is utter nonsense. What you were doing was the very thing that most crypto currencies were invented to stop from happening. It's not like these things happen in a bubble. You took funds that weren't yours and you gambled with them. Nobody else did that. You did that. You allowed it to happen. You facilitated it happening. And then you want to act like you didn't realize it was happening up until a, a few weeks ago. How? How? Why aren't you saying, oh my God, I didn't realize this was happening up until a few weeks ago. This other person who was running it did. No, you're not saying anybody else was did this. You're just like, well, it's just something that happened that happened to not be my fault because I didn't realize it, but it was going on underneath my nose this whole time. But I'm not even upset at the people who were like, no, man, come on. It's nonsense. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think of this in the comments. Do you agree with me? Disagree with me? I, I really want to get your pulse on this. Uh, I'm upset with this one, guys. I'm sorry. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next video. And as always, we'll keep talking about getting more coins.